Michigan. Um, we are the epicenter community uh, of this self-mining issue. And so from the very beginning, um, there were a few of us who participated in the whole development of Part 632 rules. I was one of the folks that sat at the table with the DEQ, with uh, township officials, with the mining companies, and crafted the Part 632 mining statute for non-ferrous sulfide mining, which is that type of mining that is non-iron related. And as part of that process, we diligently um, crafted a very good uh, statute. What happened then, though, is that we went into a rules process. And in the DEQ, MDEQ rules process, um, it was not a consensus-based operation. The statute had been all consensus-based. We all met, we all agreed on what the rules were, or what the statute would lay out. In the rules process, folks were able to bring forward um, many of uh, the detail, the scientific detail that backed up what was supposed to happen in the statute is very contentious, mm -hmm. simply because several things were were not allowed. The DEQ called it unnecessary. One was the need for a third-party hydrologic study siting, which is at, uh, having locations where mining uh, needed to be of particular care to bodies of water. Uranium mining or in situ leaching, which the DEQ stated they would put a placeholder for. Um, and the whole notion of a prove it first or a notion where you had to say um, I am a mining company coming here, I'm going to give you my track record was laid across, laid off of the table and, and not uh, put in place. The ballot initiative says that they would require a permit applicant to show that another mine in the United States or Canada is similar, A, is similar to the applicant's proposed mine in all relevant ways and B, operated for at least five years and has not harmed natural resources or cause any exceedance of applicable environmental criteria for at least 10 years after closure. The history behind the Proof of First philosophy came out of Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, after the, the sulfide mining statute was developed uh, and put in place, in April 1998, then Governor Tommy Thompson, at the request of the legislative <coughs> body, as a vote of the whole legislative body, didn't even go to the the public venue of a ballot initiative, agreed that the issues surrounding metallic sulfide mining <coughs> were so important that they wanted any company coming in to file an application to show a mine that did not, that ran for 10 years or was closed for 10 years, that did not pollute or did not meet the standards of the state that they were in. We concur that that is a good thing to do. So that is the language that we are applying here in the state of Michigan. Taking our sister state's um, knowledge of sulfide mining with the Climbo mine and also the Crandon mine uh, proposal in Wisconsin. Now I'm going to read you the legislative findings and I think a lot of people are very confused about what we're talking about here. We are not talking about iron mining. We are not talking about sand and gravel. Those all have their own part in the DEQ law that regulates them, Part 631. This is a brand new statute for metallic sulfide mining only. And everything that's associated with metallic sulfide mining is under Part 632. This ballot initiative is only looking at Part 632 has nothing to do with iron mining, has nothing to do with any other type of regulatory process over any other uh, mining rule. And the legislation back in uh, 2004 stated that while it is the policy of the state to foster the conservation and development of the state's nat natural resources, discoveries of non-ferrous metallic sulfide deposits have resulted in intensive exploration activities and may lead to the development of one or more mines. Non-ferrous metallic sulfide deposits are different from the iron oxide ore deposits currently being mined in Michigan in that the sulfide minerals may react when exposed to air and water to form acid rock drainage. If the mineral products and waste materials associated with non-ferrous metallic sulfide mining operations are not properly managed and controlled, they can cause significant damage to the environment, impact human health, 
and degrade the quality of life and the impact of the community. So our legislature in the development of Part 632 law recognized the difference between what has been going on historically in the UP with our mining endeavors and this type of mining. And so I would ask you, as very thoughtful folks uh, in the city of Marquette, that this resolution not even be brought to the table because as it, is, it is a people's initiative and you should let the people determine that. But if you are going to take this resolution, I would urge each and every one of you to think carefully about what this resolution means to our area. Thank you. Thank you.